Hello and welcome to a new series of Hearts of Iron for Kaiserreich. I am TJ. We've got uh, Brianna and Casey the Lore Dog hanging out in the background. Ooh. Casey's very proud because she just had her birthday, so she got a birthday bandana from, <laughs> from the dog groomer. It's very festive. <laughs> She's um, 11. I think we, you can probably find pictures of that on uh, Brianna's Instagram, maybe. Maybe. We'll, I'll put it up. We'll, we'll, we'll post. We'll figure out a way to, to get you some pictures of, of the birthday lore dog. <laughs> so we are playing as the Union of South Africa. Um, this is actually a nation that I've had a very long and sordid relationship with in Vanilla Hearts of Iron 4. I've tried so many times uh, to like liberate Africa as communist South Africa in Vanilla Hearts of Iron 4, and I've never quite been able to pull it off. So let's see... If we can do that in Kaiserreich. Um, so currently we're under uh, James Herzog. Uh, first rose to prominence as a Boer guerrilla leader in the sec Second Anglo-Boer War. So in this timeline, uh, the Boers, I, I guess, did a little bit better than they did historically when they were kind of put down by the British. Uh, defiant to the last, he resisted the British long after the war had been definitively lost. Even in defeat, however, Herzog continued to champion the Afrikaner people. Which are, of course, the Dutch settler people that predated the British. He rose to leadership of the Afrikaner dominated National Party and in 1924 became South Africa's first Afrikaner Prime Minister. With the collapse of the United Kingdom the following year, Herzog declared the independence of South Africa and seized the British colonies of uh, Buchanan Land and South Rhodesia. Herzog, as a president of the new South African Republic, has been a proponent of segregation between South Africa's various racial groups and has encouraged the disenfranchisement and resettlement of South Africa's already oppressed black populations. We're going to get rid of him pretty quick. Um, we have the racial segregation trait at the beginning of the game. South Africa is a divided nation. While the vast majority of the population belongs to the various native ethnic African groups, socioeconomic power is held by the white European minority. This, in turn, is divided between the Afrikaners, Dutch-speaking descendants of the original Dutch colonists, and the Boers, who settled the Transvaal and Orange Free State, and the British, who form the majority of the white population in Natal and Rhodesia. We also have a divided government. South Africa currently stands at a crossroads, one where it must decide its path forward, either as an independent Afrikaner nation under the dominance of its white major minority, or as a liberal federation and member of the British Commonwealth. This is represented by the two main parties vying for control over the government, the Nationalist Party and the Dominion Party. The question stands to be resolved in the 1938 election. So it doesn't look like... I was going through the focus tree because I learned from the Belgium game that you should probably read the focus tree before you start um, a Kaiserite game, that uh, we don't really have an option to pursue like, total racial equality and communism um, from just their base focus tree. And I'm not sure if this is one that has been finalized yet. I'm not sure how much um, attention South Africa has gotten in relation to other countries so far with this mod. Um, but we're going we're gonna to try to go down the Dominion tree, the one that's at least, you know, nominally uh, kind of liberal-leaning, uh, and I'm going to hope that there's maybe some events that will allow us to implement some more extreme uh, desegregation and, and liberation type stuff. Um, again, I don't know how many events South Africa has, but, you know, if, even if that's not possible, we're definitely going to, we'll at least join the war against the Reichspakt and, you know, get, get the, the, the gat damn Nazis get gearing out of, uh, out of Africa. That's definitely going to be a major goal. Probably maybe go to war with Portugal. I don't think they start off in a faction, do they? Um, no faction. They're led by national populists, so yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna probably we're probably gonna kill them. Um, that is definitely gonna be on the docket. So Black Monday hasn't happened. We can't do the 1938 general election until uh, it actually is 1938. That would be weird to hold the 1938 general election in 1936. People would be like, why is it called the 1938 general election? We'd be like, I don't know. It's just how it is. So, um, I think we're going to start by updating the army. 
Our ground forces must be a new priority, promoting those generals who can bring the greatest benefit and reforming their methods for the sake of the nation. Uh, research slots, I always start off by using my tech to get more tech, and then the next priority is getting more industry, starting with construction, so we can build factories as fast as we can from the beginning of the game, machine tools. Uh, we have some unassigned divisions, let's see what we got here. So we've got a cavalry division, we've got one good, in kind of good infantry division, um, and then we've got some, I think these are probably just garrison brigades, I'm assuming. Yeah, so, first SAF is decent. Uh, these guys, that's just basically a brigade. Yeah, let's, um... Let's look at where we're going to be fighting. This is actually a good time to discuss how, like, knowing, <laughs> knowing what, like, what kind of terrain you're going to be coming up against can inform how you actually design your div divisions. So, if we want to invade, like, uh, Namibia, um, this area over here, it's going to be a lot of mountains and hills. Um, so, in addition to the fact that our industry isn't great, we're probably going to want infantry and mountaineers and yeah, there are some there are some planes here um, but the victory points we're gonna have to take one of them is in hills and the other one is in uh, oh that's desert actually so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have kind of a rough and ready infantry focused army I don't think we're gonna be building a whole lot of tanks I don't think we're gonna be building a whole lot of uh, motorized um, it's gonna be more of a more of, like, a proper, like, African guerrilla force. Um, I'm just gonna change... You know, we'll keep the cavalry. We'll keep some cavalry around. I know I normally don't do that, but, um... Oops, that's not what I meant to do. I'm gonna turn all of our garrison divisions into regular infantry divisions. It'll take a while to get them fully equipped, but hopefully we won't go to war that early. Um, I'm also going to plan to we probably want to go up against Portugal first um see what kind of generals we have available to us George Brink I am gonna pick because uh that is my mother's maiden name uh there it's a Dutch name and uh that's my my maternal side of the family are Brinks so obviously this guy is gonna get the nepotism bump here Let's see, damage reduction against CAS, uh, extra paratrooper supply here, ace, probing attack. Oh, we don't even have the command points to give him any traits, anyway. Set up a field marshal, we got, uh, Jan Smoots. Good old Jan Smoots. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna put these guys on, uh, exercises. So we can get them trained up and ready to attack Portugal, because I think we're, we're probably going to want to attack Portugal before we attack Middle Africa, which is part of the Reichspakt, so it's obviously going to be a little bit little bit tougher nut to crack, whereas Portugal's isolated, they don't have any allies currently that I know of, um, so they should be a little bit easier. What, what, what do we got over here resource-wise, too? Uh, it's like nothing. <laughs> We get basically nothing uh, from taking this over. I mean, we'll get some shipyards, probably. We'll get an air base, but there's, like, nothing of strategic interest over here. Even in this area, there's, like, really nothing of strategic interest. Zero factory slots, one factory slot. It's, like, almost not even worth it. Except for, like, RP purposes. Like, we gotta liberate Africa. Whereas, meanwhile, these German lands over here, I'm assuming, alert. well, not Namibia. Namibia doesn't really have much going on. Yeah, we really need to get up into, like, the Central African region to really start seizing. There's a lot of rubber. There's some tungsten we'll eventually get access to. Yeah, so that'll help. If we want to build an air force, we'll have plenty of rubber. I don't think we'll be building a lot of trucks. 
Anyhow, let's uh, let's get these civilian factories going. As always, I try to build, use my initial civilian factories to build more civilian factories until I have enough to have a full production line of civilian factories going at all times. We have some free dockyards. Um, so let's take a look at our navy real quick. We have the South African fleet under Guy Halifax. We've got one pre Veltkrieg destroyer and uh, or four pre Veltkrieg destroyers and a light cruiser. So I think we're going to try to build up our light cruisers. Uh, just in terms of the resources we have available to us, I think that's going to be the most bang for our buck. I'm going to send these guys on a convoy escort mission to the Cape of Africa. Um, we've got no divisions in basic, which I'm not that worried about because we're going to have to rebuild a lot of our divisions. Uh, missing equipment. We're not producing any support equipment at the moment. So we're going to make that our next priority as soon as we get another military factory. Can't really do anything about it right now. Not worth it to trade for one steel, not worth it to trade for one oil, so let's unpause the game. And uh, let's get going. So formed in 1910 as a merger of the various British, British possessions in South Africa. Now let me make sure, one sec here, I gotta... Okay, pull OBS up so that I can actually see it and actually see that we're recording properly. Okay. The Cape Colony, Natal, Transvaal, and the Orange Free State, the Union of South Africa, is currently a parliamentary republic having seceded from the British Empire during the crisis of 1925. The British Revolution gave the anti-British coalition of the National and Labour Parties cause to break free from British influence that they had endured since the end of the Second Boer War, 1899 to 1902. The first president of South Africa, James Herzog, used the chaos to annex the neighboring British protectorates of South Rhodesia, Buchanan Land, or Bequenal Be Land. I, I'm not even going to try that. It's British and I should be able to pronounce it. Uh, uh, Basuto Land and Swaziland, while leaving the remainder of Britain's African colonies to fall into the hands of the German Freistaat. Union is strength, indeed. South Africa's current constitution is an adaptation of the 1909 South Africa Act. The Union of South Africa is a unitary state rather than a federation, with each colony's parliaments abolished and replaced with provisional councils. The parliament consists of two parts, the Volksrad and the Senate. The Volksrad members are elected mostly by the country's white minority, although the franchise varies depending upon the province. In the Cape and Natal, a qualified franchise based upon property and educational requirements is in place, while the, vi uh, the vote is white only everywhere else. The Senate is appointed by an electoral college consisting of members of each of the five provincial councils and members of the Volksrad. Government follows the Westminster model, although with an elected president as head of state. South Africa continues to administer Bakuanaland. Bastu, Basutoland and Swaziland as protectorates, and while considerable legislation is in place restricting the rights of the native population within the Union, it has not been fully implemented in these territories. So we got an interesting governmental structure here. Kerensky's been assassinated, unsurprisingly. Ah, all right. Curious to see what we're going to be dealing with division-wise over here. Totalist Charter. Those look like custom models. I don't think those are Vanilla Hearts of Iron models. So let's see. Updating the army. I don't know why it's bugging us about no divisions in basic. Uh, reinforcements should get highest priority. We don't even have enough infantry equipment. International Socialist League. Did that increased our popularity of socialism? It did. 
Electoral gridlock in France. Again, I, I usually make a habit of reading events that I have not seen before, but I'll probably skip through ones I have seen before. Black Monday hit South Africa. A week ago, the German stock market collapsed, plunging the world into depression. South Africa has relied on trade with Germany and its sphere of influence since the British Revolution and the declaration of the South African Republic and withdrawal from trade with the remaining members of the Entente. The crisis has had a terrible effect upon the South African economy. Unemployment has risen markedly as many companies that depended upon the German export market have gone out of business or laid off white workers in favor of cheaper native labor. So, 10% to consumer goods factory, minus 10% to production efficiency, construction speed, minus 10, factory output, minus 10, stability, minus 10. Not as bad as it could be uh, for certain. Let's see. This just gives us army experience. Ready to move. Everyone's exercising, which is good. Now, if it's going to keep bugging us about this, I'm going to go ahead and put an infantry division in production. We're going to trade them in Rhodesia and send them to this army when they're ready. But they're going to be on the lowest equipment priority. So we have lone manpower. I don't know why they're telling us we need to train more divisions. Sounds like some bullshit to me. So if we were gonna invade Portugal, the Rinco Marques would be the obvious first target, which we should be able to take easily. It's plains, there's no river crossing. Uh, let's see, let's grab our recovery from Black Monday focus here. The economic crisis threatens to tear the Union apart. We must reform our country's economy to solve mass unemployment, but the Volksrad stands divided on the path to take forwards. This choice will certainly have repercussions in the years to come and may even exas exacerbate existing divides. Let's do it. Let's give it, a, give it a try. Give it a spin. Death of Pius XI. Come on! Once we get enough army experience, I'm going to start tweaking these divisions a little bit. First international. We don't need command garrisons anymore. Let's go ahead and add another infantry to this. Let's get our combat width up to something usable. Now, I don't want to train any more cavalry, but I do want to... Mobile battalions. Add some additional cavalry. Be good for now. We'll eventually add some artillery to that once we have a chance. Papal Conclave! New Pope is elected. Tibet has joined the Great Khanate. Advancing our electronics, we can get some mechanical computing going. So wait, are the, is Mock League sandwiched now? Yeah. <laughs> Tibet joined the Great Khanate without even really being threatened by the Great Khanate. That's kind of funny. It's also interesting that our capital is uh, Pretoria in this. Is it in, in Vanilla Hearts of Iron? I don't actually remember. I think those factories are floating. I think all of these buildings are floating, actually. That's, that's probably a bug. I would have to conclude that that's a bug. So what does this actually do for us? Oh, it just gives us an event to deal with the crisis. Alright, any interesting decisions? 
police crackdowns. All right, the global economic crisis has hit South Africa hard, leaving our economy in tatters and bringing our institutions to the brink of full political crisis. Our dependence on trade with Germany, long criticized by the pro-British Dominion Party, has seen deepening hardship take hold. However, the Volksrad is divided on how best to deal with the crisis. Cheap native labor is seen by many as the chief cause of unemployment, and both the National Party and the Labour Party are calling for further restrictions to be made on native employment. The National Party also believes an ambitious works program and an exploitation of the protectorates could alleviate the situation, while Labour feels socio-economic reform is key to solving the crisis. The Dominion Party points again to the dependence on Germany and desires a resumption of trade ties with the Entente and the Empire, although large tracts of Afrikaner society would balk at the mere prospect of such a heel turn after two decades of independence. Um, so we can go with the National Party, which we're definitely not going to do, work with our co old coalition partners, Labor, uh, which helps divided government uh, not be so bad, or cooperate with the Dominionists, which makes the social conservatives increase in party or in popularity. I think we're gonna go with labor to start with. Probably. Yeah, let's let's go with the labor. Maneuvers in the Carpathians. We've got no political power to speak of now. Uh, we're gonna go with concentrated industry because I'm not really afraid of being bombed. Pick up a new focus. Uh, we're going to take the Nep Representation of Natives Act, I think. Um, originally planned before the current economic crisis took hold, the Representation of Natives Act of 1936 will become the centerpiece of the upcoming social and political reforms within the country. The original provisions will probably have to be altered significantly, however. Because that just seems like the most legit... The National Party splits. Unwilling to compromise their values, the more extreme wing of the National Party, led by Daniel Francois Milan, has broken away to form the Gesu Verda, or Purified National Party. They, respect, or they reject the current government's compromise with socialists and believe the best way to ensure the future of South Africa is to strengthen and expand the existing provincial segregation laws into a full nationwide system termed apartheid. They have already gained considerable support among the Afrikaner population, though it seems unlikely they will be a real factor in the upcoming election. You can bet your ass they won't. Let's see, can we add some artillery onto these uh, horsey boys here? Looks like we can. Horses are even better with artilleries. Arthur Horner has been elected. Now it'll be interesting to see if they actually have a way to unlock a legitimate socialist path. We do have decent support. Labor Party, ISL. Communist Party. So the Dominionists are the Social Conservatives, I believe, yeah. And then we got Purified National Party of the Paternal Autocrats and Authoritarian Democrats. Interestingly, there's an even more racist <laughs> option uh, beyond the Purified National Party and the Afrikaner Bund. Uh, some guy assumes control of Argentina. That's unlikely to affect us. Italian majority for the syndicalists. All right. Continuing to improve our construction tech. Let's start picking a land doctrine. Again, since we're a low manpower nation, I almost always will go with superior firepower. So we need to make the most of what we got. 
political power is going up, so we may one day be able to switch to a war economy. Currently no black cabinet members. It looks like we can eventually hire some black cabinet members though. Minister supports his ideology, that's fine. All right, originally planned before this current economic crisis, the Representation of Natives Act is meant to further solidify white political control in South Africa. Really, that's not what I thought that said at all. Um, appealing the attacks in the Cape and Natal provinces, which allow a small section of the native population to take part in elections. So be done by taking natives out of the electoral rolls completely, reducing them to electing only five whites to the Senate through a system of block voting. That's not at all what I thought that this was going to do. Um, however, in this new political climate, the purified National Party are advising we use this opportunity to appease our core electoral supporters, the Afrikaners, by prescribing coloreds as well as natives from voting. A compromise has also been suggested. The establishment of a native representative council which would separate natives politically in, in addition to the Acts Amendments, yet leave their rights alone. So, uh, we're not passing the original text, establish a Native Representation Council, um, which actually makes the segregation uh, modifier worse. Um, I guess we'll just pass the original text. Yeah, that's not at all what I thought that was gonna do. I thought we were being, I thought we were being nice. Um, well, let's go ahead and establish the Paramount Chiefs. Let's see what this is. Granting autonomy to the local rulers of the former HCTs will allow us to install new autonomous Paramount Chiefs of their respective ethnic groups, uh, loyal to the central government. Um, yeah, I like that. that. That lets us push for more native autonomy. Abyssinia has declared war on Eritrea. Eritrea revolts. Who owns this? Is that Germany? Yeah, German Empire owns what I believe is the modern nation of Djibouti. Ready, sir. Let's see, reinforcement wise, we're still waiting on quite a bit of everything. Once we have all the towed artillery we need, we'll switch over to prioritizing support equipment. Germany stages declared war on the uh, somebody. I didn't really pay attention to who it was. All right. Still only September 1936. So what is this one? Turning newly annexed territories over to white settlers. Oh, cultural integration of the new regions. That might have actually been better. They don't really give you a nice option, do they? Like, it's all skulls and shit. <laughs> Well, we'll, we'll hope, hopefully the question of native autonomy will allow us to be a little bit more, uh... Hey, Belgium's independent. Good fucking luck with that. <laughs> we just got done, uh, trying to make that work. So good, good fucking luck with that.